despite being a coastal territory and having a rich tradition and culture why is odisha so poor was it a, rela- a result of colonialist policies that completely destroyed it or some other event in history everything that has gone wrong in india in the past 1000 years is the consequence of foreign occupation and foreign colonialism it starts with the turkic invasions of india which uh, destroyed which which basically began the genocide of india in which at least 500 million people died over 5 6 centuries okay it 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 uh, resulted in the destruction of incredible amounts of india's architectural and religious and cultural and traditional heritage or almost all of the temples in northern northern india and western india have been wiped out destroyed they're all in ruins today much of south east south of india was also affected at least especially in more recent times right and then you had the british who came in who basically did an even more thorough job of destroying india the extracted everything that was of value out of india and transferred it into their gdp right and they impoverished india they uh, stole everyone's land by by the rayatwari act they reduced the entire population of india to subsistence farming and destitution they destroyed india's culture india's heritage india's writing systems india's education system everything and they imposed this divide and rule policy that we are still implementing today and our government and our people and our education system everything is still completely colonized i if i don't speak in english half my viewers will leave because they don't understand hindi right so that is the situation we are in today so everything that we are suffering from today in india is a consequence of 1000 years of humiliation the chinese talk about a century of humili- humiliation right well india has undergone a a millennium of humiliation we must not forget this and the the ones who are enjoying the benefits of our, of our wealth must be held to account when india rises all right so the point is this that see it it does not it did not only affect odisha it affected the whole of india but yes today odisha is comparatively poorer than many of the states such as gujarat for example which benefited from the policies of narendra modi for a decade and gujarat was able to uh, rise very rapidly because of the right policies and if you look at india the peninsular part of india the western portion of india is overall more developed the eastern portion including kalinga etc orissa bengal is underdeveloped it's because of various local governments and various central policies so the local government in bengal has been the communist government which basically reduced uh, bengal to 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 poverty right there was a povertarian agenda an agenda of of no development zero development etc and similarly in orissa also i do not blame the the current government for impoverishing orissa but they have not been that proactive in developing the state orissa is rich in everything it has an incredible culture a very very rich and and uh, glorious history it has wonderful natural resources it has the be- most beautiful beaches you know and it has so much uh, traditions and culture the jagannath festival etc i mean that's just one example you have the konark sun temple that i haven't visited in more than 40 years etc so my point is that orissa has everything that a state could ask for for it to become extremely prosperous so i blame see what happened before independence it is all because of the colonizers and occupiers of india they will be held to account some day soon but after independence it is the socialist policies of the nehruvian regime and the local state governments that are responsible for every state that is in in a in a bad condition today and orissa is definitely one of those i think if you change the policies of the government in, in orissa especially when it comes to tourism and culture orissa could benefit like anything in the next 10 years if you just change some policies if you could would turn odisha into a, a tourism hub and a culture hub you would have you would get millions of tourists every year and they would inject millions or billions of dollars of cash into the local economy that itself could give you a big spurt in the in the growth it would uh, it would kick start so many small industries and various other uh, complete ecosystem of arts culture industries and all that catered towards tourism that's just one example of how orissa can, can be developed and there are so many other ways there is so much in orissa so the thing is it's all first of all because of 1000 years of humiliation and colonialism 
and secondly because of the socialist and povertarian policies post independence of the central governments and also the state government so that is why orissa is so poor today and in, in such such in the, in the shape it is in today